The story is a story of how the field of statistics, which is about 250 years old, uh, has evolved since electronic com computation came in in the 1950s, came into our field in the 1950s. And it's a winding story because uh, not all, not everything happened at the same time. Some fields took, it, some areas took it up, some didn't. But by now, it's had a profound influence, not just on the new stuff, but on the old stuff too. Brad started the, the book project, um, and, and after a number of years, he invited me to join him. By then, he'd written a number of chapters. And he wanted my input um, and, and my collaboration because he wanted me to write some of the, the, the newer techniques um, for supervised learning and, and so on that were going to be the 21st century techniques. So of course I was glad to join in on the project and, uh, and we had a lot of fun collaborating. We generally wrote our own chapters, um, but at the end I was the, the sort of curator that yeah. Cleaned up the figures and, and made things look pretty mm -hmm. and, and um, I wrote four chapters, um, there's 21 chapters in the book, so most of it's Brad. Um, uh, I, uh, I, the book would not have been finished without Trevor because uh, I simply didn't know the material for the, uh, the, the uh, big prediction algorithms. Uh, selection algorithms. I should say that the book started in my own mind after I'd had a bad health scare and I decided that I d didn't want to just write one more paper or ten more papers <laughs> and uh, uh, that's when I started it and it was about two years in when I realized I was in a crisis and uh, fortunately down the hall was somebody who could get us out of the crisis together and it's been a very happy collaboration. Also, it's given me a much better idea of uh, 21st century statistics. Also, Brad was a natural person to write this book because he's a bit older than me, and he started off his career using some of the, the older um, fashioned ideas and, and more mathematical statistics. And he was one of the pioneers in the, in the computer revolution with his invention of the bootstrap, which is really in using the computer heavily to do statistical inference. And as the years have evolved, the computer gets used more and more for, for doing statistics. The, the word inference in the title is important. Uh, there's two levels of statistics. One where you make up algorithms, and that's, that's the part that's sexy and everybody loves. And the, when you read in the newspaper about deep learning or something like that, it's the algorithmic side. But there's another older side of statistics that has to do with why these methods are good or bad. How do you choose among infinite number of possibilities? And that's where the inference comes in. And so a large part of the book is trying to say why people do what they're doing, not just what they're doing. Well, we hope they'll walk away <laughs> not staggering. Uh, the, uh, it's a long book and it's got a tremendous amount of material in it. Uh, it could serve as a uh, whole master's level course in statistics. Um, w what I hope they'll see is both the diversity of statistics, statistical methods, and the unity of the ideas that motivate uh, these methods. And uh, that's a tough go. Uh, at the end of the book is a, uh, a graphic, a, a triangle picture uh, showing uh, the, statistical, uh, the statistical profession uh, moving from pure applications down to pure theory over to the computation side and winding around. And what's happened in the last 15, 20 years is that the field is somewhat split into those who do algorithms and those that do inference. Now that's, n that's not a correct way to say it or completely accurate, but uh, uh, I'm hoping that the readers will see that there's the two levels of statistics. I think another thing they'll, they'll take away is there's been an age-old battle between frequentist statistics and Bayesian statistics. 
And in Brad's chapters, um, Brad is one of the few people in the world, I think, who really understands the blend between frequentist and Bayesian statistics with empirical Bayes in the middle. And it's very succinctly put down in, through examples and, and through the chapters. You get a really good understanding of both of these areas and, and how they come together. So I think that's something people will re are really welcoming because you, know, you don't have to read a million papers. You can just read these nicely well-written well chapters that Brad wrote and come away with it. Well, so what, what we're both hoping is that these modern big prediction algorithms, in particular deep learning is very al courant, uh, will be better uh, buttressed with real inferential theory behind them. And I, that's not at all clear that that's going to happen, but I have hopes. There's some things in the book that make it clear some of it is happening already, and there's a lot to go still. So as an inspiration to a young statistician who's uh, uh, working towards his PhD, say, uh, and wonders, is there anything to work on? There's, uh, the field is very open right now to uh, advancement. Uh, the twin poles of uh, computation and theory are both pulling. And uh, I, I, the computation is pulling harder right now. But I think we're going into a period where there'll be a lot of theoretical advances. And uh, uh, I'm hoping the book would uh, be some spur to that. Well, you know, machine learning invents often a lot of the new techniques like deep learning and boosting. These are techniques that came from the machine learning world. And one of the interesting challenges in statistics, they usually present these, these methods as algorithms. And one of the interesting challenges is to come up with an explanation, a statistical explanation of these methods, to put it in the framework and, and in the right context and so that we can understand it from the statistical point of view. And then once you can do that, then you can do things like inference and, and, and understand the statistical properties of the methods. So for me, that's a very exciting um, movement. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with that. The, uh, in about 1900, uh, the field was in a sort of similar situation to what it's in now. Uh, people were very excited about doing things like uh, uh, taking averages and, and uh, linear models, but it wasn't very well understood what the basis of doing that was. There something better to do? And uh, uh, R.A. Fisher came along and put a th very solid theoretical basis under uh, estimation. And then uh, Neyman and Pearson came along and put a very solid basis under hypothesis testing. And that's, uh, if, uh, it would be wonderful if somebody could do the same thing for prediction, which is not they, none of the classical people could handle prediction, uh, and part of it is it's too mathematically difficult uh, to handle. It's a messy, but with the computer and modern uh, mathematical thinking, I think it's possible that people will really be able to do it with the Fisher. Maybe we need another Fisher uh, to do it, but uh, uh, I'm hoping that that'll happen. I, I'm out, my, I have another hope, which was in the talk I gave today called Bayes, Oracle Bayes, and Empirical Bayes. I'm hoping that uh, people understand Bayesian inference better, more operationally. People sort of slap it on now and uh, to problems, and it's often very interesting and very effective, but why it works is open to question. If it works even is open to question. And empirical Bayes is an intermediate method that I think makes it clearer both what's good and what's bad about Bayes. And I'm hoping there'll be a lot more research connecting frequentism and Bayesianism, and I think it'll be through empirical Bayes.